Look, if you wanna get into Rent to Rent, this is the video for you. I'm gonna break down 12 steps to getting set up right now. Unsubscribe from everyone else, cancel the courses, this is all you need. So, welcome to this life-changing video. That's right, I'm gonna break down the 12 simple steps to set up your business. And by the way, the reason I created these 12 steps was because when I was starting in Rent to Rent a few years ago, I couldn't find all the information in one simple place. So I've done it for you. And guess what? Not only do you get this video, but if you wait until the end of it, I'm gonna give you a guide for absolutely free. So if that sounds good, if you're getting value from this channel, smash the subscribe button right now. Hit the notification bell so you get notifications every time I drop these gems. And do me a favor, like the video and comment below with any questions you've got. So before we get into it, why the hell should you listen to me? Well, I've been in Rent to Rent for three years. I've done countless deals now for myself and others. And my whole thing is Rent to Rent can be simple, but you've got to get the foundations correctly. And I think a lot of you might go to a course or you read a book and then you get on the phone and you're like, you know, oh, I can guarantee your rent. The, the amount of messages I get from people that have just been to a course on, you know, your open rents and, and Facebook markets where they're like, yeah, I'm desperately in need of properties. I'll guarantee your rent. And then I actually ask them a few questions and realize oh, they've got it all wrong. So don't do that. Get set up correctly create a professional image, hit the ground running, and you will fly. This is easy if you do these 12 steps. So let's get into it. Step number one. First things first, you've got to create yourself a limited company. Now look, I can't give accountancy advice. I can't give financial advice. All these are just my opinions on what I did. And you will see as we go through them, the more of these you've got, the easier rent to rent will be. But personally, I think you just can't beat having a, a limited company on company's house, you're the director, you've got a start date, you exist. Uh, another advantage of a limited company is that you then aren't personally liable for the things that may go on. So you've got a limited company. Now we're always going to act in the best interest of our landlords, our tenants, ourselves. However, you don't want your personal assets seizing. So give yourself the protection of operating in a limited company. And in terms of the tax ramifications, it can be really, really good to control, to take control of your tax liabilities and that you can do with a limited company. Speak to your accountant if you're a high net um, worth individual or if you're earning a lot of money, you're a higher rate taxpayer. However, I think what they'll probably tell you is that if you are serious about getting five, 10, 20 deals, you're gonna have to become a limited company sooner rather than later, no matter how much you earn. So be careful here, <laughs> talking of accountants, because some accountants will charge you a few hundred pounds to set up a limited company when all you need to do is go on Google, search limited company, loads of websites will come up. One of my favorite is Companies Made Simple, and you can set up one of these companies for 13 quid. Once you've got your limited company set up for your company's house, and you're feeling really, really good, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do this rent to rent thing. Now it's time to set up a business bank account. Now you will need the company's house number to do this. So that's why you need to do step one before step two. Don't overthink it, you know, go for one of the major banks or if you're in a hurry, there's loads of online banks. Now I'm not going to list any, um, you know, once again, not financial advice, but if you go on Google, there's a few different online banks that you can set up overnight. You're gonna need this business bank account. And the main reason you're gonna need this is you're going to want to have full transparency and a separate entity so that you can't be running a limited company through your personal bank account. So set up a separate bank account, do director's loans from your personal bank account into the business of bank account, and then spend the money on your rent to rent from there only. 
Number three, it's time for your brand creation and logo design, okay? Now, interestingly, it doesn't have to be the exact same name as your limited company. Think of your limited company as your parent company, and then you're gonna want trading companies or com a company underneath that. So for example, if you call your limited company Smith Properties, okay, you might then have the trading name as Smith Properties, but you could also have it as Smith Lettings, and then you could potentially have Smith Serviced Accommodation or Smith HMOs. So you're only gonna need one parent company, and you've got that set up already. Stick around for the end of the video, by the way, because you're going to need to set up your limited company with a specific SIC code. And if you stick around and get the guide, the code is in the guide. So that's really, really important. But essentially, now you're gonna to wanna to think, right, do I wanna be called Smith Lettings or Smith Relocations? Once you've got a company that you feel like is original, that you feel like you can get the domain name, go on GoDaddy or whatever.com and make sure a variation of your domains available and of course you'll already know it's available on company's house then you are good to create a logo and i recommend fiverr.com just go on there there's tons of people designing logos for 20 quid um you know at this point i want to save you as much money as possible so go on fiverr tell them you know any ideas you've got your brand name and get some logos in from day one if you're getting value from this video, all I ask is that you smash the subscribe button right now, comment with any questions you've got, hit the notification bell, all that good YouTube stuff because I'm adamant that I want to scale this YouTube channel because I think it is by far, yeah I said it, by far the most valuable rent to rent specific YouTube channel. If, you, if you're trying to do rent to rent, look no further. Everything you need is on this channel. So hit the subscribe button and any questions do comment below. So you've got your limited company, you've got your bank account, okay? You've got your logo and you've decided on your trading business name. Now it's time to get a website. Now look, I remember when I started, I didn't have a logo and every landlord would say to me, what's your website? And I'd be like, um, uh, it's down. Uh, I've not got one yet, but it is a brochure. And I can't, I cannot overstress how important, how much of a game changer it was when I got a website. It, it, it was just massive. And I just went on Squarespace and I designed a simple website just listing the benefits. And what I found was that a lot of the time with these landlords, it's not one decision maker. You know, it's Mr. Landlord and Mrs. Landlord, husband and wife, or it's siblings, or you may be through an agent that's then going through the landlord. And what happens is it's like Chinese whispers. You'll say you'll guarantee their rent for five years, and somehow, <laughs> from person to person, that gets completely lost. And then it's like, oh, they'll only guarantee our rent for the first six months. And you're like, huh? So if you've got a website, when you start these communications, you can say, look, this is what we'll do. And by the way, here's our website. And then what happens is they don't have to poorly explain your business model because it's there in black and white how you want to communicate it. So get your website done. Strong domain name and list the benefits. Keep it really simple and don't try and appeal to everyone. Just appeal to the landlords right now the landlords, we will guarantee your rent. Number five and number six are all about the communications, the comms, as the uh, boffins call it. You're going to need a professional email address and you're going to need a local landline telephone number. Main reason for this is that the last thing you wanna be doing is, you know, trying to pitch yourself as a professional business and then give, you know, it's Simon Ladiesman6475 at hotmail.com. It's like, yo, like you need to change that email that you set up when you was 12 and you need to get serious. So if you're Smith Lettings, then make sure it's information info or information or inquiries at smithlettings.com. And it's really simple to do that when you set up the domain and the website. 
If you're using someone on Fiverr, just tell them you want a couple of email addresses. Get them set up. It makes a massive difference. Now, there is a bit of, you know, mixed, or, or should I say mixed views on what email to give to agents? Because sometimes what happens is you call up the agent, you know, you say you want to arrange a viewing, they ask for your email, and then if you say <laughs> guaranteed rents, Simon at guaranteedrents.com, <laughs> they're going to be like, huh? Hang on a minute, like, are you competing with us? Like, are you, you're not one of these rent to rent, you know. So some people I've chose to give a personal email address strategically at times. I'm not a big fan of that. I just give them my email address. But you may want to take that into account when you are thinking of your business name, okay? You want to make it quite neutral and it can be property based. But keep in mind that when you share it with agents, you don't want them to feel put off. So that's a little key hack. And in terms of the telephone number, have you ever been following a van, you know, a, a van down the road and they're, you know, advertising as a business and it's got a mobile number on there and it just gives the impression that it's a one man band, it's a small business. And properties are the landlord's biggest asset that they've probably got, so therefore, they're going to give them you. They want a reputable, trustworthy company. So get yourself a local landline. If you're in Leicester, don't sign up for an office in Mayfair and get a London number because in some businesses that might work, but in property, people want to see that the person or the business is local. It gives you credibility. So get yourself a professional email address and get yourself a professional telephone number. Before I move on, there are a couple of hacks in the guide in terms of the telephone number and how I personally use a call divert service. If you want to know more about that, hang on till the end of the video and download the free guide. Number seven, and we're getting there. I told you, this stuff is gold dust. All you've got to do is follow these precise steps and you're going to have a rent to rent business by the end of it. Um, and I think the record we've got is somebody's done all these steps in like seven days. So this should not take long and then we can get moving. So next step is physical marketing. And all that means is when you're going round and meeting landlords and agents, at the beginning, it can be good to have some type of brochure or some type of leaflet that you can share and say, hey, this is us. Business cards, not a big fan of it. You know, I feel like website, uh, maybe a physical piece of marketing is more important than a business card because it communicates your message. When you give a business card out, normally you're giving your business card out and it's got your website and your information on there. So just cut out that stage, you know, just go bang, there you go, here, this is what we do. It's like I said in that other video, hey, this is what we do. This is what we do. That's what you need because then you can take it, take it home with the wife or the, or the husband when they're having dinner, oh yeah. <laughs> This is that company, by the way. They can read through it. So you need to get your website done first. Once you're happy with the copyright and everything on the website, once again, pass it on to a designer. Get something designed for 25 quid. Get a few printed out. I remember when I started, I just whipped mine up on my own and then I'd get my little suit on because I was trying to give a good impression. Uh, the baggy suit because I just was not that guy. And I'd go via the printers and I'd print four off for my four viewings. You know, and I'd go down there, I didn't have a lot of money. Go, grab them, take them to the, to the viewing and, and give them over. Sets a good precedent. You turn up looking smart, give them a brochure. Moving on, the next step is digital marketing. So as you know, we are in a digital social media world right now and the best and the easiest way to communicate your marketing message is through digital social media. And therefore, there's a few hacks that I recommend. You're going to need some kind of social presence, social media presence. Now, the last thing you wanna do is set up a Facebook, set up an Instagram, set up a LinkedIn and them all just be laid dormant. So at the beginning, I would pick one and stick to it, as my granddad used to say. Get all your stuff loaded up and start trickling out content. Now, it doesn't have to be the best content in the world at the beginning. It's more about you just formulating that habit and also it gives you a timestamp. So 
you know, if you set up a business on the 1st of January 2022 and you do your first Instagram post, even if, you know, you end up rebranding a year's time, you've still got that stamp, you've still been around and that can give you social credibility. Don't buy followers, just don't do it. Like, just try and build up a genuine following um, and, and don't be afraid to invest a little bit in it because it really does, it really does count. Next thing you want to do is you're going to want to set up a Google business, okay? Um, I'm not sure if you've ever been on Google and you, you know, you're searching for a restaurant or whatever and it comes up on the side and you've got the phone number, the reviews, the address. So you're going to want that for your business because guess what? When somebody searches HMO Management Leicester, okay, or Guaranteed Rent Leicester, you want to be hopefully coming up in the SEO and ideally coming up on the right hand side so they can pick up the phone and give you a call. If you get all of this stuff right, you'll find that landlords will start to find you. And that's what's happened in my business, which has enabled me to scale to countless deals and, and large revenue figures. Number nine, you're going to need to register with the ICO or the Information Commissioner's Office. Any UK company that's taking people's information needs to be registered for data protection. So of course, as a renter, renter, you're going to be taking landlord's personal information, tenant's personal information, clients in terms of service accommodation people's information. So make sure you set up. And when you go on the website, you will be able to put all your company information in and it will then tell you what level of cover, cover, so to speak, that you require. Membership, let's say, depending on how big you are, your revenue, what types of information you're going to be collecting. Don't overthink this. It is a bit scary at the beginning because you'll, you'll, you'll be racking your brains. Just answer the question to the best of your ability today and get it sorted. And then what you can do is you can bang the ICO logo on your website so you've got that stamp of approval. Number 10, if you are managing a property that you don't own, you are required to join one of the three property regis schemes. I personally favor the PRS. I think they're reasonable in price and the service is really, really good. So once again, be sure to get a membership. There's different levels of membership. Don't over procrastinate. Maybe just get the cheapest at the beginning to keep your costs down and then you can smash the PRS logo or whichever property regest scheme you choose on your website and it gives you further credibility. Are you still with me? It's, it's a lot of information but I hope you find this useful. This is a comprehensive list of exactly step-by-step -step what you need to do. If you're finding this useful, like the video, share the video with somebody else doing rent to rent. And remember, stay tuned because in a few minutes I'm gonna be sharing the free checklist. Number 11, you're going to need to protect your business through insurance. Absolutely critical, okay? And there's gonna be different types of insurance you are going to need. You're going to need a business insurance to insure your business uh, which will include private indemnity insurance and public liability insurance, etc. And then you're also going to need to make sure that you brush up on your knowledge in terms of property by property insurances, whether you're doing SA or HMO. So yeah, you want to make sure that you get this insurance done correctly. And if you need a link to an amazing broker, hit me up on Instagram, at Simon Smith Online. More than happy to share my connection with you and they specialize in rent-to-rent -rent insurances. Last but not least, and this is also another really important one, and that is your agreements. You're gonna need the correct paperwork so that you can actually complete on deals. Don't wait, okay? I actually did this. I waited until I was really close to a deal and then I scurried around trying to find the right agreement. And it, it takes time. So in terms of agreements, you're going to see there's three main types of rent to rent agreements. Number one, often used with the, the vendor directly is a management agreement. Number two is a commercial lease, often used with the vendor. 
And the third one that I see a lot of that is typically used by agents is called a company letting agreement. So I would recommend choosing one of the direct to vendor agreements. And then of course, in terms of the company let agreement, it'd be good to get a copy to study, but the agent will then normally send you one of those and you'll just need to change the necessary points and clauses in that because don't go out there and sign a standard company let agreement because it won't be right for what we do. Another top, top tip is never ever sign an AST for rent to rent. That is when you start getting into the world of illegal subletting and you need to make sure that you use the right paperwork. So go and get yourself the right agreements. If you need any guidance on help, hit me up on Instagram. More than happy to try my best to help. I'm not a lawyer, but I can point you in the right direction. I hope you found that useful. If you want the free 12 steps checklist, all you've got to do is comment below and I will personally DM you a copy. Once you get the copy, go through them step by step and I promise you, don't make the same mistakes I did. Don't do a million courses. Don't wait a year to get started. Just do these day by day. Within a week or two, you'll be fully set up, compliant and ready to go. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, check out the rest of the content. There's tons of dedicated rent to rent content and I will see you in the next video.